Hello, I'm Mr. Muskalock, your EP Chemistry teacher at Chem Advantage with one of our virtual labs. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go for our third lab, which is going to be on uh, the decomposition of baking soda. This is just going to be taking baking soda and heating the heck out of it so it decomposes into its components. Or, uh, one is sodium carbonate and the other is carbon dioxide and water. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to do things in a bigger scale because I like the product. In fact, I use the product for cooking. I'll be using it to make some pretzels later today. So I'm going to be making some sodium carbonate uh, because it can produce a nice solution when I make my pretzels. So first of all, we've got to find the weight of the container we're going to do our experiment in. I'm going to place um, a little insulator on here. Uh, some cork. I love this cork stuff. Uh, and uh, the uh, cork is going to be the insulator because I'm not going to let things cool. That would take too long for me. And this will save my balance. And then I'm going, instead of using a beaker, I'm going to use a aluminum pan because I'm going to have so much uh, baking soda uh, that I'm going to have. So I'm going to take the initial weight here and record that as 28.325 grams. Okay, 28.325 grams. That's my initial weight. And now I'm going to put a lot more baking soda than you'll be doing in your experiment uh, with the beaker. If you do this with a live lab, I'm going to uh, dump in about 30 grams. So I'm going to get up. Well, we'll see. Let me dump in enough so that I have enough for my uh, baking needs. And I'm going to get this up to, oh, about there. That looks pretty good. That'll be enough for what I need. I'm going to get up to uh, 56.540 grams, okay? So I'll record that as my massive pan, 56. So I've got a little bit less than 30 grams, 0.525 grams. So that... That milligram amount is really iffy uh, because actually this balance goes up and down by five on the milligram, so it doesn't really mean that much. Uh, but we'll record it. In fact, I see it's being three zero right now, so I'm going. To, it looks pretty stable, so I'm going to cross out that answer and put down fifty six point five three zero grams. Subtracting these two will give me the weight of the baking soda. So okay, fine. I'm set. I'm going to take this out. And there's my, my baking powder, a nice, white, fluffy powder. You're not going to see much in terms of the chemical change. Um, so this one is, on the molecular level, it'll look good. But on the visible, we'll have some other experiments that are a, a lot neater in terms of what they look like. So I've got my pan here with my uh, pure baking soda in it. I preheated my oven to 450, and I'm going to bake it at 200 degrees Celsius, uh, that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 200 Celsius roughly, and I'm going to bake it for 15 minutes and then recheck the weight. So, uh, Alexa, set timer 15 minutes. Third timer, 15 minutes, starting now. Okay, we're in the oven. I'm going to get my oven mitts for the rest of the experiment, and we'll just hit pause, and we'll, you'll, I'll have to wait 15 minutes, but you'll just have to wait a few seconds. Well, we're back. Okay, Alexa's telling us that it's time to take the pan out of the oven, and we're going to do that. Alexa, stop. So here's the... I'm going to go to the oven right now. There we go. I'm going to use some tongs instead of uh, a hot pad because I've got the tongs here. Might as well use them. So I'm going to pull the pan out. Yeah, it's hot. I'm going to put it over here on another cork that I have because I've got to do some weighing. I'll turn my uh, balance back on. Have it go to zero and put my insulator on there and then put the pan and the
hot sodium hydrogen carbonate on here and we'll check the weight. Here we go. What does it say? Whoa, we're down to, my goodness, 47.505 grams. We've almost lost nine grams. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna set the timer again and we'll take another 15 minutes on this and I'll hit pause. Well, we're back. It's been about 15 minutes and uh, I'm ready to pull out. Oh, Alexa, stop. That's our 15 minute timer. And um, I'm gonna pull out our baking soda. I've, I've switched over to my oven gloves because those tongs didn't really work all that well. And we're gonna find out what the weight of things is. Now I'm going to set up my balance right now so I can do a quick way um, and zero it. We've got it at zero. I'm gonna put my insulator on there and move this a little bit. I'll explain that in a minute and see what our weight is right now. Okay, here we go, We're grabbing the hot aluminum. Oh yeah, this is much better. Love these goggles here, or oh, these mittens. Okay, there we go. Now you really shouldn't be weighing hot things because uh, convection currents mess up the weight. Um, Alexa. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. Oh, Please sorry. Please try a little later. Oh, <laughs> Alexa's having some problems. Anyway, let me get this weight down. Uh, okay, we've lost some more weight. Man, 45, I don't mix, let's make it, again, it's fluctuating, maybe because of those air currents. Uh, 46 point zero, it's still losing weight. Oh, it's still losing weight. You know, what's probably happening is this stuff is, oh, it's, <laughs> it's continuing to lose weight. Uh, no, there we go. Here we go. Let's just say 45.035. There, this looks like it's stabilized at that. Again, it shows you those convection currents, but right now I'm going back to put this in the oven and we'll give it another 15 minutes. Ah, there we go. Uh, and I'll take this off. And in the meantime, uh, Alexa, set timer 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Starting now. You mean you've noticed in the background here I've got a glass that's at room temperature and while I was waiting in the last experiment I took a 50 ml beaker and put some of the baking soda in it the sodium hydrogen carbonate and I've got it in a pan oops I better get my cork out here because I, I took a bunch of baking soda and put it in a 50 ml beaker and let it cook for about 15 minutes and I'm bringing it out now. Here we go. I've got it on this hot pan and I'll put the hot pan there and I'll put the, whoa, that's a hot piece of glass even through this oven mitt. And that sodium hydrogen carbonate should be decomposing. And I'm going to Put this glass over it, and we're gonna wait a couple of seconds. We got a good view of it. Now, my guess, it's still hot enough that it's gonna to continue to decompose, and oh yeah, yeah, I can see it right now. If, uh, yeah, you can see it there. I, I can move it a little bit over. There's a fog that's collecting on the inside of the glass that glass was perfectly clear before, and it's completely fogging over right now. Uh, so we have some condensation in there. That sodium hydrogen carbonate is still decomposing, and one of its products is water vapor. So here's sort of our proof, this condensation on the top of the glass, and uh, now that's, uh, it's going away right now because the glass is getting hot enough. If I got another, uh, colder glass or if I put some ice on there I could probably distill out the pure water that used to be in that baking soda but those heat currents from the glass are coming over here and you can see on this side and this side where the heat but look there there at this section it's like very definitely fogged now here's the part that's hot and here's 
the cool part where the water vapor that used to be baking soda. Oh, in fact, in fact, look at the top. You can actually see some droplets. This is a perfectly dry glass, glass before. And those droplets are coming from this NaHCO3 producing CO2 and H2O vapor, which now condensed up there. So, oh, that, that's the proof that our experiment's working. Okay, I'm going to put it on pause, and we'll see what's happening to our baking soda in another 15 minutes or less. So, pause. Well, the timer just went off, and I'm going to bring the baking soda out again. Let me get the balance going here and get it back to zero and put my little insulator on there because we know things are getting hot and I'll get my great oven mitts out. Oven mitts! Here we go and see what we get. Whoa! Okay. There. Make sure I get it on nice and securely. There. And uh, we'll give it a couple of seconds and let it cool just a touch. And uh, because of the air currents and stuff, in fact, you can see the weights just fluctuating and the fluctuating. We'll give it a couple, a minute or so to cool. You know, that water that was locked in there. Most baking soda comes from a mineral called Tron, uh, Wyoming, I believe. And it was deposited, they figure, about 40 million years ago. So the water that we have in that baking soda that we just released is like really, really ancient water. It's almost like, hey, hey guess what, you guys? After 40 million years locked in this rock, Tron, you're out in the free world. You're, you're out, you can end up making you know, being water and do all the things that you would normally be free to do, no longer locked in that structure of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, wow, what a change. Okay, here we go. Here's our, our final weight. It looks like it's nice and stable. Eh, still fluctuating a little bit. Let me see. I'll, I'll risk my little fingers here and see how hot it is. Oh, it's not too hot. Okay, good. Let's see. Oh, there, <laughs> look at that. Uh, and that, that, that five there. Let's make that 46.00, grams. That's almost exactly what we had last time. So it looks like it's done. It looks like the reaction is over. We lost a lot of weight the first 15 minutes. We lost some more weight on the 30 minutes, but after 45, now, the change hasn't been that much. It's still sticking around there, 46.03, 46.02. In fact, I'll change it right now to 46.03. Now, it could be that it might be absorbing some water, but it's not that humid. So there we are. We've got our, what's now, this stuff. That doesn't really look all that different, but it is. It's, here we go. You can just barely see it. It is... Uh, now, sodium carbonate, it sounds the water and carbon dioxide that was released too, that was locked in that tron. Okay, uh, we've got our data. Now we'll go analyze it. And me, I'm going to end up taking this now sodium hydrogen carbonate and make my pretzels. My dough is all ready. And I've got my sodium carbonate, which is very, very basic. To make a good pretzel, you have to have a basic solution to boil it in. So, okay, I'll stop right now, and we'll go over the data in a couple of seconds. Well, we've done our experiment. Now it's time to take that experiment data that we have and make some sense out of it. I mean, it was interesting. You know, we heated the stuff up and got our new product. But let's see how good it was and if we could really predict what's going to happen with this and determine experimental error and all. I had a table set up so we could have these weights and pretty much that's what we've got. We've got a series of four weights and we can use these to analyze the experiment to show what's happened. This is not unusual for a uh, AP type question. They'll, uh, in fact, let me pull one up right now. 
this is a, uh, where is it? Here it is. Here's another type of experiment where we've got a bunch of weights where we start off with some empty filter paper. We toss in uh, a precipitate. And you should probably read over how to use filter paper and so forth in, uh, in the lab uh, section of Chem Advantage. They've got a special section on filtration. And you collect some stuff that's wet, wet with the precipitate, and then you gradually dry it. So here we've got four weights. Uh, one, which is the most critical one, which is the empty weight, and then the stuff that we're weighing, and then gradually drying it out, in this case, to find out what the dried weight is. So let's go back using that same same system here, where we have our initial weight, which is the empty stuff. This 28.325 is the empty container. That was just that aluminum foil and the cork. Then I dumped in a bunch of sodium hydrogen carbonate, just like you dump in stuff in the, the filter paper. And this is our reactant, and it is 56.53 grams. The difference between these two weights is going to be the weight of just the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So all we got to do is subtract these two to find out a really important weight, which is that sodium hydrogen carbonate. Let me pull up my calculator and just do that right now. I've got it in front of me here. I've got the two weights. So uh, the uh, 28.325 grams empty and subtract the final weight, which is the 56.53. Now that last zero there is pretty iffy. We saw that balance would only show a zero or a five and it fluctuated quite a bit. And you know, we'll put, put an enter. Of course, we get a negative number because I put that in, but we know you're not gonna have a, a negative mass on this. So that 28.205 grams is gonna be just the weight of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So a weight of 28 point, let me get that in here. See if I can get that. 28.205. And again, that, that last five there is probably not going to be something. Let me change the, that so it's visible and, and put in, uh, I think, I, Let's make that important, considering that here. I'll, oops, don't want to move that. I'll want to instead grab this. No, no, don't move that. There. And not only that, I'm going to highlight the whole thing and indicate that that's bold face and that's important in red because we can start with that. We can take that 28.205 grams you know, and let me just put in the unit. It's bad form not having a unit. And using the molar mass or formula weight more accurately probably, find out how many moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate we have. Just a little division and you can say, hey, these are the moles of the, of the white powder that I put in there to start with. And of course, we're heating it, and we're going to change it into our new substance. They rearrange the atoms into two sodiums of carbon and three oxygens. And we'll know because there is a coefficient of one here that we will have half as many moles of sodium carbonate. Now, uh, with that new combination, it's got a new formula weight and by multiplying, you're going to be able to predict how many grams of sodium carbonate we should have produced at the end of the experiment. Even without doing the experiment, we can say, hey, this is what I should have gotten theoretically. And let, let's see if it really ends up happening. Well, we did the experiment. And indeed, when we heated it, it lost some weight because the water and carbon dioxide were escaping. Now, the constant mass was conserved. It's just that some of the mass left. 
uh, left the room. And we said, okay, maybe the reaction is over, maybe not. So we kept on heating it and found out, oh, the reaction isn't quite over because we lost some more weight. We lost some more water and carbon dioxide. You saw the water when we condensed it. And we waited another 15 minutes heating it and noticed that the weight hardly changed at all. So we knew the experiment was pretty much over. So now we can figure out, uh, we can say, hey, this was my mass when I had just sodium carbonate. But don't forget, you've got to subtract the weight of the empty container from it. And now you can predict or see what actually happened and compare it to what our predicted value was and say, hey, you know, this experiment was exactly right for what I did or I was above and below and do our experimental error. So this is this is really neat that you can do this type of prediction now that you know moles and stoichiometry and actually do the experiment. So why don't you do the calculations and see how good I was at heating this baking soda. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick calculation here using a spreadsheet. I've got the spreadsheet pretty well set up. Uh, here, I'm going to take the recorded mass of the uh, empty pan and cork, which I see is 28.32, 28.32, and that last value was a 0.5, and it was pretty iffy. Uh, now, the the I added the uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, the baking soda, to get 56.530 grams. Uh, and then heated it and the mass dropped down to 47.505, but it was a hot pan, so that value fluctuated a lot. Uh, the carbon dioxide water vapor is what escaped and that's why the mass became lower. Now, you can look here that I've made the calculations set up automatically. I just set this up so that I would subtract the B5, which is the mass of the empty substance, empty uh, pan and cork from this other mass, B6, done automatically. And then I did the same here, except I picked up B7. So any of these values I can put here, I can make a change right now and make this a 47.51, and the calculations will change automatically. Oh, by the way, uh, let's make this a 2. So it shows up, and there. You can see it happens very, very neatly. But I'm going to make this the uh, 05. Uh, now, this doesn't show the hundredths, but I can make them show the hundredths. I can expand that. I'll show them down to those values. Okay, uh, that's the data that I entered, and the calculations were done automatically. And I've got the rest of the spreadsheet set up here where I have what I start with, the mass, and again, let me increase its drive as 28.05. I already put in the molar mass of uh, the sodium hydrogen carbonate. In fact, I actually have that to 007 uh, for that extra sig dig, which is, that's pushing it. And then this calculation is simply taking whatever value I have for mass divided by my molar mass. Now, the really key part, this is what chemistry teachers will be looking for, is for you to know that the amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate, two moles, will produce half as much of the sodium carbonate uh, because of the water and carbon dioxide escaping. So I just took whatever value is produced here, and as you can see, divided by two, took the molar mass and multiplied by it, and then let me carry this out a bit. And you'll see I've got that final value, and let me bring it out a bit. Uh, the percent error calculation here is, uh, let's see, that looks a bit high. I don't think it's, oh, I know what's wrong here. Because actually, if I look back at my data sheet, the final mass was 46.03, and I wrote down 47. 46.03, change this around. And wow, there we go. I have an error of less than a, 
of just about a percent, slightly lower. My guess is the convection current instead of. And so that's a quick way of using spreadsheets. I advise using these uh, for a lot of your calculations. And uh, if you're doing it for a college class, they'll appreciate your using a spreadsheet. Okay, that's my calculation. And this was a great experiment, less than a percent error. Hey, I'll do that again. I finished making the sodium carbonate and sodium carbonate is pretty useful in the kitchen. You can use it to toughen up and change the structure of proteins in wheat. And one of the real tricks of using it is making pretzels and bagels. Now I made a pretzel recipe using Alton Brown's Food Network recipe. And I made up this little dough and got it all ready and then uh, took it, rolled it out. You can watch Alton Brown doing it uh, to make a nice long uh, piece of dough here. I then went and got some water to boil because one of the things about making pretzels is you, and also bagels, is you boil the dough first to sort of toughen the outside a bit to cook it ahead of time. And the water that I have, you can see here with the pH paper that I used was pH of seven, but that didn't last long because what I did next is I dumped in the sodium carbonate we put in and voila, the boiling water became very, very basic, a pH of 11. And those hydroxide ions attack the gluten and the proteins even more and change their structure. So I took the bagel now this here we got this tied up little pretzel i should say They're not the best looking pretzel in the world but uh it's a pretzel nonetheless and i boiled it in the sodium carbonate basic solution for about 60 seconds then took it out and then i had my three pretzels here that i had enough dough for and put it in the oven heated it and one of the magical things about when you take of the dough and boil it in this basic water is that it browns beautifully. In the Alton Brown recipe, he didn't use the sodium carbonate, he used an egg wash, but that's sort of faking it. When they really make pretzels, they'll end up using sodium hydroxide. Sodium carbonate is almost as good. And as you can see, I got a beautiful browning on these things. And these things just tasted great. So it was fun doing this experiment because I got some pretzels out of it. There we go.